Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed how the median nerve and the ulnar nerve branched within the forearm to provide innervation to the muscles there. Now we're going to see that as the median nerve and the ulnar nerve traverse across the wrist into the hand, they're going to provide several branches that are both cutaneous in function and also to provide innervation to the intrinsic muscles of the hand. We're going to start by discussing the median nerve. Now notice the orientation of the median nerve relative to the ulnar. The median nerve is going to be closer to the thumb side or the lateral side of the hand, whereas the ulnar nerve is going to be closer to the digiti minimi or digit 5 or the medial side of the hand. And this is actually no different than how it was in the forearm. They continue in the same pattern here. Now here's three of the branches of the median nerve. The first of these branches is the palmar cutaneous branch, which is going to supply the skin of the lateral two-thirds of the palm. So forget about the digits for a second. If you look at this region right here that I'm tracing out with my mouse, this region is the area of the hand that's innervated by the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve. It provides that sensory information. The second branch is that which goes to the thenar eminence, and this is sometimes referred to as the recurrent branch of the median nerve, the recurrent branch of the median nerve. And it supplies motor branches to the three muscles of the thenar eminence. Those are abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and opponens pollicis. Remember that abductor pollicis brevis allows abduction of the thumb at the carpal metacarpal joint, Flexor pollicis brevis allows flexion of the thumb at the carpal metacarpal and metacarpal phalangeal joints. And opponens pollicis allows opposition of the thumb at the carpal metacarpal joint. Again, this branch is sometimes called the recurrent branch of the median nerve. And then the last branch here in this picture is a motor branch that goes to the lateral lumbricals. That is lumbricals one and two. Remember that in general, lumbrical muscles allow flexion of digits two through five at the metacarpal phalangeal joints, but extension of these same digits at the interphalangeal joints. So these two lumbricals right here that are closest to the thumb side, they're on the lateral side of the hand, these two are going to be innervated by this motor branch coming from the median nerve. Now, there are also the palmar digital branches. These are branches that are really just going to flank digits 1 through 3 on either side and the lateral half of digit 4. So they're going to provide sensory information on the palmar aspects for the lateral 3 and a half digits. Um, I didn't show a branch going over here to this side of the thumb, but it does provide a branch over here this side of the thumb, both sides of the second digit, both sides of the third digit, and then the lateral half of the fourth digit. And you can see over here, again, on the palmar aspect, you can see the region supplied by these palmar digital branches. So either side of the thumb on the palmar side, either side of the second digit, either side of the third digit, and then the lateral half of the fourth digit. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about the ulnar nerve. And the ulnar nerve has something similar on both the dorsal and the palmar aspect of the hand. Now this right here coming from the ulnar nerve, this is the dorsal cutaneous branch. Notice it's not on the palmar aspect, it's on the dorsal aspect. So having said that, this line right here which is meant to show the nerve is a little bit transparent to show that it's on the other side of the hand. And this dorsal cutaneous branch supplies the skin of the medial one-third of the dorsum of the hand and the skin of the medial dorsal one and a half digits, that is on the pinky side. So if we look at the skin of the medial one-third of the dorsum of the hand, that's over here in this right picture. So this area that I'm tracing out with my mouse, this area right here, this is supplied by the dorsal cutaneous branch but also it's the skin of the medial dorsal one and a half digits on the dorsal side. So if we look here, so this side of the fourth digit and then the dorsal aspect of the fifth digit, okay? Those regions are supplied by the dorsal cutaneous branch. And again, that's purely sensory. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's remove some of these things here to make some space. And we see that the ulnar nerve also has 
some Palmar digital branches that do almost the same thing that the dorsal digital branches did. So if we look at the Palmar digital branches, they supply the skin of the medial Palmar one and a half digits. So no longer on the dorsal side, that was over here. They're now supplying the medial one and a half digits on the Palmar side. So here's the, the medial side of the fourth digit and then all of the fifth digit over here. Then we also have this muscle, Palmaris brevis, which is actually not present in every person. It's actually a genetic variant. But palmaris brevis, when it is present, is innervated by this branch of the ulnar nerve. Its function is to tighten the hand grip via applying tension on the palmar aponeurosis. Let's now look at the remaining motor branches of the ulnar nerve. You can see four of them right here. The first coming off is that which is going to the hypothenar eminence, which innervates the hypothenar muscles. And there are three of these, just like there were for the thenar eminence. We have abductor digiti minimi sometimes called abductor digiti minimi brevis. There's flexor digiti minimi brevis and opponens digiti minimi. Abductor digiti minimi is going to allow abduction of the fifth digit at the metacarpophalangeal joint and a little bit of extension of the fifth digit at the interphalangeal joint, mainly the proximal interphalangeal joint. Flexor digiti minimi brevis is going to allow flexion of digit five at the metacarpophalangeal joint and then opponens digiti minimi is going to allow both flexion and opposition of digit 5 at the carpo-metacarpal joint. The next branch that comes off is that which goes to abductor pollicis, and then there's another one that comes off to the third and fourth lumbricals. Remember that adductor pollicis, or adductor pollicis, allows adduction of the thumb at the carpo-metacarpal joint. And remember that the lumbricals have split innervation. Lumbricals 1 and 2 were innervated by the median nerve. Those were the lateral lumbricals. Lumbricals 3 and 4 right here are innervated by the ulnar nerve. These are the medial lumbricals. And again, recall the lumbricals allow flexion of digits 2 through 5 at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension of the same digits at the interphalangeal joints. The last motor branch to come off is that which goes to the interossei. Remember, we have dorsal interossei shown here and palmar interossei. The dorsal interossei allow abduction and flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension of these same digits at the interphalangeal joints. The palmar interossei allow adduction and flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension of these digits 2, 4, and 5 at the interphalangeal joints. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the innervation of the intrinsic musculature of the hand and also how the median nerve and ulnar nerve divide and branch as they reach the hand. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.